What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, I'm gonna go over three different methods that you can use to override templates in WordPress. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to quickly shout out WP Rocket. WP Rocket is a caching plugin for WordPress, my favorite caching plugin for WordPress. And it does a thousand different things um, virtually. And some of the things that it includes is uh, like minifying and concatenating your CSS and JavaScript, um, helping minify your images and saving static HTML versions of each of your WordPress pages so they load extremely quickly. So if you're interested in something like that, the link is in the description. And if you end up clicking on that link and buying a license, it ends up kicking back a few bucks to me. So if you wanna support the channel, that would be a great way to do it. Um, as far as this example goes, um, we are gonna go over three different methods like I mentioned, the first of which is what I've got right here. So I've got a parent theme over here on the right and the child theme over here as well. And what we're gonna be, uh, and we have the child theme activated. So um, all these files are coming from the parent currently, and we're also having our style.css in there as well. And we've got a navigation menu here, just home about services and contact. And that is coming from our parent theme. And if we kind of follow the path here, We've got our header.php right here on line, or our header.php and on line 18, we have get template part, which is going into our partials folder and then getting a file called nav-menu. So if we open up partials, we have a nav-menu, which just has four anchor tags about home, about services and contact. And this is the thing that we want to override on our child theme. Let's say for example, that we want to put in our own menu or we wanted to add something onto our menu. What are the different ways of doing that? And so this is the first method that I'm gonna show you is that, well, since we know that they are using get template part here in the parent theme, what we can do is we can create this exact path in our child theme and it will overwrite it. So what we can do is go and make a new folder in our child theme and uh, name it partials, just like it is here. And then we're gonna create a new file and it's gonna be called nav-menu.php. And just to make things fast, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it in this file in the child theme, and let's just delete the home page. Let's say we just don't want that. So if I reload the page, now all of a sudden we have those three. Our parent theme is untouched, and now we have overwritten that particular piece of the parent theme. Now let's just delete that real quick, and let's get it back to normal. We can refresh this. Now it's all back to normal. Um, the other method for overriding a template is simply just uh, taking a header.php, like in this case, the header.php file and making a file that's exactly the same name in our child. So if we do header.php here and we go in here, it will completely delete it all. So what we could do is go into the header.php and the parent, paste everything in, and then um, we can save that, refresh, and then it'll grab that um, partial up, up there in the parent. And then we could override it here. We could say, nope, I don't want what's coming through from the parent. So I'm just gonna take what they have and I'm going to remove the home page or the home link as well. And so that's the second method. Now, those are probably gonna be the two most common that you're gonna to run to, either just overriding specific things in like get template part or whatever, and then there's also just blanketly overriding the entire file. What I like about each of those first two is the first one just makes it so you can target a very specific piece of it um, and overwrite it um, completely. And then the other method, just overwriting the entire file, just, says, just completely wipes what the parent is doing and you get to take over, you have complete control of what, what's happening in that file. Now the downsides to both of those is number one, the get template part piece um, is really only dealing with template files itself and you can't really like inject stuff in there in a way that makes sense in my brain. So let's say you wanted to just add on to that file or something like that, or you wanted to, I don't know, inject a lot of different things that are happening all at once into that file. Like get template part really isn't that in the place or the place to be doing something like that. So the third and final method that I know about and the one that I use on a day-to-day -day basis is using actions. 
And I think other things use this as well, like WooCommerce. WooCommerce uses a lot of actions to determine like its templates. Um, and so if we are, let's get rid of, get rid of header.php here. And let's take a look at our header.php. Now, if we have control over this, what I would say to do is I would say, instead of having get template part here, I would say do action and then an action name. Now, I am a big fan of namespacing my actions, so I'm gonna do WPC and then nav menu. And we'll refresh and there should be nothing there. Exactly, all right. So this doesn't output anything. And so if I were, you know, the parent theme owner, I wouldn't have this partials anymore. I would delete that. And I would just have a functions.php here and I wouldn't do it exactly like this. I might split this out into its own file or something like that, but just for um, brevity's sake here, I'm just gonna do add action, um, WPC nav dash menu, and then I'm gonna do render menu as the function. So I'm gonna create that function called render menu. And then we can just add our menu in, in here as well. So we'll save that and we should be all back to normal. So now we have our menu on our parent theme. What would we do if we wanted to override this particular piece on our child? So let's create a new file, functions.php, and let's open up some PHP tags. And let's add an action on init, and we're gonna run a function, just an anonymous function here. What we first would want to do is we wanted to re would want to remove the action that was um, or the, remove the function that's being called during this action, which in this case is render menu. So we want to on the WPC nav menu action, we want to remove render menu. So if we go back, we can refresh and it's gone. So now we kind of have um, a playground here where we can add an action on WPC nav menu, and we can run an anonymous, anonymous function. And let's grab, and let's just paste this in here. And again, I would probably split this out into its own file, but just so you can kind of get a good picture of what this looks like. So then on this action, we can now refresh. Do I have my header saved over here? And what I would do is I would just have something that looks like this. I probably would split it up into its own file, but just so we can kind of see it all at once here. And now we have our home about services and contact menu item. So we refresh, we could see that this is what's going on here. Now, I know this is more code, and but I feel like there's a really good um, case to be using this type of uh, method, first of all, is if you are the owner of the parent and the child uh, theme, having your site use these actions allows things like plugins um, that you create, maybe custom plugins, and your child theme to kind of insert code here and organize that code um, all at once. And that's not something you can do with like a get template part if you need to inject HTML from your um, plugin and your child theme, like just overriding them um, isn't gonna accomplish anything. Here you can have control from different parts of your application. So from your plugin, you can remove this, add your own thing from the child, you can insert something afterwards, all this kind of stuff. So using an action here to output template pieces um, allows for more scalability across different parts of your application. And um, so this is the piece, the thing that I use uh, the most when I'm structuring my parent themes and modifying them with my child themes.
So let me know what uh, you guys think of this method. Um, is this something that you would use? And let me know what you think about the other two methods and um, if those are you know, kind of the way you do it. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'd also like to thank my patrons for supporting the channel and I appreciate you guys watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I do these tutorials, I try and do them just about every week. Um, that tends to waver sometimes in busy times of the year, but I try and do my best. But I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.